All right, so we're going to do a little trade deadline roundtable here on NHL tonight. The trade deadline coming up in a couple of weeks, March 8th. Circle that one on your calendar. Elliot Friedman, we bring him in for this discussion as well. Elliot, I'll start with you. The Flames, we just saw that. We heard Rupert pick up the phone, call the Flames. Uh, what are the Flames' plans coming up, do you think, March 8th? Well, first of all, I would say that if you haven't picked up the phone by now, you probably aren't doing your job properly. Everybody knows uh, what the Flames have been up to. Look, I think this. I think the Flames have shown, uh, if you look at both their deals, the Zadorov one and the Lindholm one, in both cases, they said, look, we've got an offer. If you're in, give us your best offer now. And if not, we're going to make the deal. And that's the way the Flames' Craig Conroy has shown he operates. Now, Markstrom, don't forget, he's got term and he's got control. He's basically said, if you have something, you bring it to me and I'll decide. The other two are UFAs at the end of the season. Uh, I believe the Hannafin market has heated up over the past week as news has filtered out that he's going to test the market. I think there are Canadian teams like Toronto that have interest in Hannafin. I just think the U.S. teams think that long-term, he's much more of an offer for them than anywhere in Canada. The TANF situation, there are a lot of teams around that, from Toronto to Dallas to Colorado to Tampa Bay to potentially Boston to uh, Edmonton to Vancouver, although Vancouver, I think, would have a really hard time doing it. I think the Flames right now said they are hoping to get a first-rounder for TANF, and they want to see if somebody gets there. I think this has been very hard on the team and the players, the players especially, I think a lot of the players would like this to be over. They're tired of it being mentioned, but that's where I think it stands with all three players. You've been in a room like that. Like, what do you do? If you're a guy in the room, you're grinding, you're, you're fighting for your lives here, you're three points out of a playoff spot, you, you hear all the noise out there, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling. How does that, how does that go through a dressing room? The air is thick. It makes the air thicker, and it's palpable. You can really feel it when that's the case, certainly. Within the group, all the boys are talking about it. Then all of your significant others and family members are talking about it. It's a known commodity yeah. at that point, Each, mm -hmm. You know what it's like. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we all, we've all been around it in different ways. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been a tough year for the Flames. I know Elliot uh, has talked about it, at, it on his podcast and also on Saturday nights and in the different uh, venues that he's on about it's just they've been we've been talking about the Flames all year yeah. with these guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's it's hard on them. It's it's you really you know Elliot, I feel for you because like it's, it's like you're talking about that same thing over and over and over and over again. It will come to an end on March eighth. These are players, especially those defensemen that, that teams are going to be looking for. The, the one I'm curious about still is Markstrom. And, uh, you know, we talked about the Devils being interested. And it's mm -hmm. dead. It's not dead. Nothing's dead. <laughs> you never know. It can easily – Elliot, you know, right? Things that are dead sometimes come back to life. This is why I don't like making pronouncements because yeah. once you've gone somewhere down a road, you want to see can you get back to that road. And – Look, the, the other guy I feel for is Craig Conroy. I think the I think the pressure on him has been immense. And, uh, you know, I, I think the role of the agent, too, in this situation is to do best by your clients. So you're constantly reaching out. What's going on? What's going on? Can we move this along? I think I'm amazed that the Flames haven't completely fallen out of the race. Um, but I think, look, he's kind of said, you know, I, my price is here. If you get here, We'll, we'll do something, but so far in those cases, they haven't had it. Now, with Markstrom in particular, I think the other issue is retention because mm -hmm. he, he's got term left. I think the, there's been some questions that say, people saying the Flames don't want to keep money. I don't think that's true, but what I do think is true is they've set a high price for it, and that is a challenge because, number one, you have to make the trade for the player, and number two, you have to make the trade for the retention. And teams kind of have a chart where they say, well, this is what this is worth and this is what this is worth. Because Markstrom has term with him, the Flames are asking a little higher. Yeah, and I'll just add to that two things. One, once this is over, the good thing is I don't have to hear any of our neighbors here in Jersey ask me about it anymore. <laughs> two, I don't have to hear any family members and in-laws up in Alberta ask me yeah. about this anymore. Yeah. But quickly, in speaking to some folks from the Devils, I got a good sense of what they make in their playoff revenue yeah. and what they made last year per game. I can tell you now, if they don't make a deal for the likes of yeah. Markstrom, let's just say, I think that that would uh, be hamstringing their own financial kind of upside yeah. as well. So and we'll they see where this goes. And they sold a ton of tickets this year big based time. on what, what they did last year. Big time, so. big time. Well, you Good mentioned point. Markstrom. We're starting to hear UC Soros' name. Yes, we are. In the mix as well. We, Markstrom, Soros, if you're the Devils, do you have a preference or do you get 
whoever you can get. Well, here's the, th I'll give this uh, to you guys in a sec. The biggest thing is, number one, you're looking at Markstrom. I wouldn't say number two, but you're also looking at Soros. Yeah. Now, with Soros in Nashville, same thing. He also has some term remaining. But here's the thing. There are some, fam there's some familiarity. Tom Fitzgerald played Connect the dots. in Nashville, right? Andrew Burnett, he played with, who's their now head coach. There are certainly relationships. Yeah. And also, just in Jersey. Exactly. Yeah. He was just here. But you could also say their relationships also with, with Calgary because they did the Toffoli deal yeah. with then Sharon Govich and them as well. So Soros is very much in play, though. Yeah, what do you think, Elliot, about Soros? Because they have Askarov in the minors playing very well. They are kind of in a retool. What do you think about this possibility of Soros moving? Well, I think the one, the one thing that stands out to me is if you would have asked me earlier in the season, like Barry Trotz was quoted as saying they wanted to get an extension done with Soros. And I believe there was actually a meeting with him where that was discussed. And now it's it's really changed. Like, you know, for example, on the weekend, I think on that podcast, I said, EJ, that the chances are was going to be like, I wanted to say it used to be like 99 to 1 that Soros wasn't going to be traded. And I was dropping down to 80-20 or 75-25. <laughs> and I had people telling me I'd give you even better odds than that, that it happens. I, I had people going down to 60-40 and 50-50. So it, it, to me, it, it goes back to, it really shows you how much things can change in a few months. And what I think it is, is I think the, the uh, natural predators are looking for scoring, offensive talent. Mm -hmm. And I think what they feel as of what they're willing to move or potentially willing to move, what can get them that? And I think that Soros is that name. Now, the difference for me between Soros and Markstrom is two things. Number one, uh, Mark, uh, Soros is a couple years younger, a few years younger, but also Markstrom, you get two more years. Mm -hmm. Soros, you get one. And I do think that teams would be willing to pay a bit more of a price for the second year of Markstrom, if they really believe in him as a goalie. But I absolutely do agree with you guys when you say that if, if it's not Markstrom, now there's another option there that teams really like. And I, the other team I wonder with Saros yeah. is the Kings, because I know they've mm -hmm. kicked that idea around mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Elliot, just quick, is it because they have the strength at the position in the minors? I mean, Askarov was a first-round pick, and he's playing well. I mean, is that pushing this forward in your mind? Are you hearing any of that talk? Yes, I, I do think that's the case. Like, that Milwaukee team has won, like, a billion games in a row. <laughs> yeah. like, up to 17 a, a, now. Askarov yeah. has played quite a few of them. Um, look, like, Saros is a known commodity, and Askarov isn't. Um, that's one thing I always, you know, people yeah. get excited about prospects. Saros is a known commodity. And also, he's up for a new contract in a year. So, I think that, I think the fact that Askarov has really taken off on the back end of the season, though, EJ, you're absolutely right. I don't think that makes Nashville 100% comfortable with doing it, but I think they are more comfortable now that they've seen Askarov's recent resume. I know we chopped yeah. this topic up a little bit earlier, so I want to get Elliot's take on this one. The Pittsburgh Penguins, Ooh. massive game tonight against the Islanders, but the Penguins, yeah, buyers, sellers, Jake Gensel, UFA, injured right now. What do you think the plan is in Pittsburgh? Well, Kyle uh, Dubas is going to speak tomorrow, so I'm sure he's going to provide us with a lot of answers. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, um, you know, I, I do think this. I, like, I think one of the things that Dubas has made very clear in his organization is that it is not the time for them to be like they don't have a ton of assets youth youthful ones i mean obviously they have some great ones but youthful ones and i think he's made it very clear he does not think this is the right time to trade for short-term help or even trade his useful assets period i think he's there to kind of build them back up at the same time so i don't see him trading for help in the short term to make the penguins so much better so I think that everybody in the organization is aware of that, um, and they understand that that's what the plan is. So I think with Gensel, I think, you know, there are some teams who suspect that Dubas will try to re-sign him one more time, but I don't know that that's true. I, I think that since they're really in a tough spot right now, I think it's likely he hits the market. Um, and the, one of the things I think people are really curious about is if Dubis allows teams to talk to Gensel before he considers any trade. And I think that's going to be one of the more interesting storylines in this, is if the Penguins do decide to trade Gensel, and I would put my percentages on more likely that happening, because they need to add some more things to the organization, 
The question is going to be, do teams get to talk to him first? Elliot, I, I want to get your thoughts on this, and there's no no answer. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the show, and I always go back to all the different sports. I mean, the great players in every different team, almost it's very rare that they play from the start to the finish with the same team. I mean, we've seen it in hockey. Gretzky did not finish in the same place he started, and you can go through all the sports. Sidney Crosby is still a high-end player in this league. This team is struggling, and it's going to continue to be problematic, and I think the fix is one that it's going to take time. Yeah. Just give me your thoughts on, on like, you've been around Sid a lot. I, he's never, ever said he wants to be anywhere else, but the reality is if the team struggles and Sidney is still a really good player, I, I just I don't see him sticking around and, and being on a bad team for four years. Um, I, you know, I saw his quotes today in The Athletic where he said that uh, he wants to be a Penguin for the rest of his career. Uh, I think that if, you know, if that was to change, he would, he would have to let them know that. I think they've discussed this with him. I find it very hard to believe just dealing with Dubas in Toronto as I did. I, I kind of have some idea of the way he prepares things. I would be surprised if he hasn't talked to Crosby already, if he hasn't filled him in on what he's thinking and how he thinks he's going to get there. And I would I would bet that, you know, for example, they can extend Crosby a year before his, his, con his contract's up, which is not too far away. Yeah. But you're, you can't extend him until July 1st, the previous year. But you can talk to him. Yeah. And I, I, I shouldn't say I guarantee. I should never guarantee things. But I believe those conversations have happened. I think the Penguins know exactly... Uh, what it could look like if there's an extension with Crosby. Um, and I believe that if if the Penguins had reason to believe that Crosby was unhappy, they would probably have a good inkling of that already. Interesting stuff. Yeah. yeah. TBD. Yeah. Yeah. That's for trade yeah. deadline, yeah. long-term future, Sidney Crosby, yeah. and the rest look, of the Look, guys, like, I, I, I guess I should say, like, I think he stays. Yeah. I yeah. do. I, I think it would be... It would it would have to take a really big meltdown by the Penguins for him to say, "I'm go I want to go somewhere else." Because when he says he wants to be a Penguin forever, I believe that he I believe him. I take him at his word. Mm -hmm. So I think it would have to be a real total rebuild for the mm -hmm. Penguins for him to ask out. And I just I don't see that in their future. I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but that's the way I kind of read it on this day. Mm -hmm. All right, time will tell. Yep. 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 Elliot, we appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Thanks, sure, sure, we'll chat with you in the coming weeks uh, ahead of the trade deadline, March 8th. Thank you. All right, guys, take care. Have a great night.